First, let's go through assignment three. Now, assignment three is a heuristic application analysis. It's actually more pseudo-heuristic. And it is a group project. This is something you will be doing with your group. So for this assignment, you and your team are planning on designing a new application. Before you start, however, you're going to use the knowledge and skills that you've learned in class so far to conduct a pseudo-heuristic or an, what's called an expert review. And you're going to do this on a potentially competing application. All right, so the application is going to be Plants vs. Zombies. Who's heard of Plants vs. Zombies? Oh, I see big smiles. So I figured you guys are experts in games, right? That's supposed to be a yes. <laughs> if not, you're hiding under a rock. All right, so, um, so you're actually going to be analyzing Plants vs. Zombies and applying some of the knowledge that we have gained in class thus far. Now, I will tell you that one of the reasons that I decided to create this particular assignment is because it gives you lots of practice on things that you need to know for the midterm exam. And of course, why did I choose Plants vs. Zombies? Because it's fun. Might as well make your life a little more interesting. Um, but actually, Plants vs. Zombies, one of the reasons I actually really did choose it is they actually have won awards for uh, their usability and their ease of use. So it has a lot of very good examples that um, you guys get to figure out what they are. Don't do an internet search. Because remember, in your midterm exam, you cannot do an internet search. <clears throat> so what you're going to do is you are going to take your groups, and you're going to kind of break up into little mini groups for step one and step two. You'll get together back in step three. So I want you to pair up with one or two other people in your group. So your mini groups will be either a group of two or a group of three. It's up to you guys. And then you're going to go to um, PopCap. They, are, they do have Plants vs. Zombies available online, except for this morning. Um, apparently they're down. But you can play the game online if you don't already have it. If you already have it, what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to essentially create a new user. Because I want you to uh, basically analyze at least the first uh, five, well, I guess, the first five sub-levels of level one. You can play more if you want. But I want you to at least play those. Now, for those of you who don't have Plant vs. Zombies, they have it online. You will have to deal with sitting through, I think it's about a 30 second ad or 20 second ad in between your sub-levels, but it's not too bad. They look at your cache and it's kind of like something that's stuck up there. But you can uh, play, it, play it online if you want. So I want you to break up into your mini groups. Each mini group is going to go and play Plants vs. Zombies through at least level 1-5. All right, so it's five sublevels, not through level five. That's like the whole, whole game. For this assignment, just one dash five. <clears throat> now, as you are playing this first time, I want you to look at it from the perspective of a user. I, and what I really want is for you to take notes. So the idea, ideally, you'll have one person playing, and the other person will be taking notes. I want you to take notes about your experience as a user. So how do you learn how to play the game? How do you know what to do? Uh, what do you like about it? What do you not like about it? Assuming there's something you don't like about it. What motivates you to continue playing? And is there anything that demotivates you from playing? Things like that. So. From a user's perspective, how do you feel? Do you like it? Do you not like it? How do you, how do you figure out how things work? So for those of you who've played it before, put yourself into a naive mindset as if you've never played it. <clears throat> then I want you to take those notes and I want you to translate them into a description of the user's desires, needs, motivations, and contexts. So why would a user want to, want to play this game? What are their desires? What are their motivations? You're basically going to take your experience, and you're going to describe it more from a more general 
perspective of the user. Now, one thing that may happen is that the person who's playing the game and your partner or partners have a slightly different you know, experience. You just want to incorporate that. You want to make sure that you include a list of at least five user experience goals that are satisfied by the game. This is actually part of this, actually. And provide a brief description of how each is satisfied. Do you guys remember what user experience goals are? No? Do you want me to bring it up? It was in lecture two. Yes? <clears throat> Here we go. So your user experience goals, things such as this. This is not an exhaustive list, of course, but things that I've already told you that you'll experience as a user. Is it satisfying? What motivates you? Is it entertaining? Is it helpful? Is it emotionally fulfilling? Right? Is it stress reducing? Those sorts of things. So this is from a user's perspective. <clears throat> so that's step one. Now is step one clear? Pretty easy, pretty fun, right? That's supposed to be a yes. I thought you guys would be so excited. All right, now, <coughs> step two. You get to play the game again. Now, why? Because now you're going to go through it with a different perspective. And you're probably actually going to be also pausing it, taking screenshots, things such as that. Because now you're really going to start analyzing it based on a lot of the other aspects of user experience that we've talked about in class. <clears throat> so again, you want to play, go through the game again, at least through, through level 1-5. This time you're going to be analyzing the elements that contribute to the experience. I want you to detail how these various aspects are used to improve usability and user experience of the game. You want to make sure you include detailed discussions of all of these things, all of the following. And again, there's my hint. You are going to want to take screenshots because you are going to need to include annotated screenshots in the document you're ultimately going to turn in. All right, so these are things that we have talked about in class. Your usability goals, your design principles. Now you did deal with those in assignment one. Now you are complete experts on those. I know you'll do really well. Locus of attention. How do they use locus of attention in the product? How do they deal with issues with memory? Short-term memory, long-term memory. Um, you can also, oh, for, like, for locus of attention, you could see if there's anything with change blindness, right? Your singular locus of attention, those sorts of things. Go through, through your notes. So formation of habits. Do you see anything related to formation of habits in the game? If so, what? as well as the Gestalt laws. So the ones that say all of them, that means that you actually have to have an example of all of them, all of the usability goals, all of the design principles, all of the Gestalt laws. Now, here's where I ended up cutting it down for you since you have half a week less. I actually cut the number of examples in each of those that you have to have in half. Originally I was going to say, I, originally I said that you had to have at least two of each of them. Now you only have to have one. So you have to have, for example, um, at least one example of learnability. You know, at least one example of safety. At least one example of um, dealing with issues with short-term memory. At least one example of dealing with long-term memory. Does that make sense? 
Now you can put more. You are certainly welcome to, but you have to have at least one. And so this is, this is, when you look at the details, it's a pretty extensive list that you have to know for the midterm anyway. So this will be very, very good practice for you. <clears throat> the other thing I want you to do in that step, and this is one of the last things you'll probably do, is I want you to describe what are the user goals for this product. And what are the tasks? So what are the goals? What are the tasks? And then I want you to be able to tie in the tasks that you discuss with specific goals. Now this part doesn't, that part doesn't need to be extensive. But I do want you to think about it and be able to identify the difference between tasks and goals, which is actually part of today's lecture, and to be able to tie them together. Okay. Any questions on step two? I'll scroll back up. No? You guys got it? All right, step three. This is where your subgroups are going to get back together. Because right now, so far, what you have are notes. Right now you're going to get back together, you're going to have your subgroups, so you may have probably just two subgroups, and you're going to compare notes. So I want you to look at how similar are your findings. Where do they overlap? Where, what are the differences? Now the differences may be that you just honed in on different aspects of the product, or it may be that you have differences of opinion in terms of for example, is it really easy to learn? Or is it difficult to learn? What is safe? What is not safe? Those sorts of things. So you want to talk about whether there are any conflicting opinions. <clears throat> Keeping in mind, conflicting opinions are fine. In fact, a lot of times conflicting opinions can be a good thing because it may show you something that may differ with your users. You just want to talk about it in a very objective and professional manner. One is not right, one is not wrong. It just gives you more content for your assignment. <clears throat> now, after you compare your notes, you are, as a group, going to uh, create a report. And you're going to be turning this report in. It's going to be either in a Word document or open office document, something similar to that, that I can open. Please don't send me dot pages. I don't have pages on my Mac. So uh, Word or Open Office. What I want you to do is I want you to document. I want you to consolidate what your two little mini groups have found. Consolidate them so that you are submitting one group report because you are working as a team. Now, why am I doing this? Because sometimes out in industry, you'll find that teams that tend to be larger teams, they will break up things into various components. And they will work on these various components. Sometimes there'll be some overlap. Sometimes there's not a lot of overlap. It kind of depends. And then they come together. And as a team, they use what they found to make decisions and recommendations. So in this case, you're doing that with the analysis of this product. So I want you to document all your findings from steps one through three as one cohesive group. <coughs> So make sure that you consolidate them. I don't want you to say group one found this and group two found this, and then I find, OK, they found the same thing here, and they found the same thing here. As a group, what did you find? And then after that, then I want a separate section that talks about any uncertainty that you may have. And notice how I worded that, any uncertainty about how, for example, users may actually see this product. And this is based on any differences that you may have found, particularly if you have differences of opinion. Now, it may be that you have minimal uncertainty, and that's fine. It may be that something stood out as you know, really great to you know, one of your subgroups, but not to the other. 
In that case, you can just mention that it was more important to one set of users than another, and that's fine. This, again, is going to be, I'm assuming, relatively short. But I want you to make sure you talk about anything that ha has a little bit of uncertainty. <clears throat> and then here's the last part. Remember what we've talked about when it comes to reading. Do we like to read? No. Now, of course, I am going to read your reports. But remember that you want to create a report that is visually appealing and easy to read, where it's easy for me to immediately find the information that I'm looking for. So I can very quickly see that you have provided all of the information that I'm asking for in this, <clears throat> excuse me, in this assignment. So make the report easily readable. You must incorporate a number of elements. One is you must include annotated screenshots to illustrate your findings. Do you guys know what annotated means? Some of you yes, some of you aren't sure. Annotate is basically I want you to take screenshots and you kind of make boxes and arrows and text that points to things that you're talking about. So if you are talking about a uh, gestalt principle of, I don't know, proximity, you put a nice Nice box, you know, you take your screenshot, you put a nice box about what you're talking about, the proximity, you put a little arrow, and you just write something like Gestalt Law of Proximity, or example of Gestalt Law of Proximity, something like that. That's what makes it annotated. Now, that makes it easier to understand. It also makes it less wordy in terms of when you are describing what you found in, excuse me, in your Word document. Now, that doesn't mean you just put the screenshot and you don't have to talk at all. The screenshot is used as a reference to make things easier. You still need to reference the screenshots. Don't just throw it up there and say, ah, I shall know what it is. So these actually can be very, very useful. All right, I do want you to have section and subsection headings. Don't just put a big blob of text. Let me know what you're talking about in each section. You know, use things like bullets, tables, formatting, those sorts of things. You know, bold, italics, underline, don't overdo it. But you want to use those to your advantage to make sure that this is a very nice document that is easy for me to grade because I'm your client. And not that you're paying me for this. But if you have a client, most of the time until they approve that final document, you don't get your money. At least that's the smart business way of doing things. So you want to make sure that you get it as close to what's going to make your client happy as possible. <clears throat> One of the things I would suggest, after you create your report, before you turn it in, give it to someone and just have them go through it quickly and see if they have any suggestions. See how clear it is. All right, any questions about step three and four? No? You guys are ready? All right, so there's one deliverable. It's going to be an, an office or, or, excuse me, a Word or open office document. I'm expecting, and this is, this is just a rough estimation, that it's probably going to be between four and six pages, depending on how many screenshots you use and how large you make them. So if you make a, pay, you know, a, a screenshot that is the size of a page, you're going to have a much longer document. I'm not concerned about the length. I am concerned about the quality. Of course, by the way, that also means one page is probably not going to do it either. So <clears throat> this is a very, very rough, rough estimate. And as with your other excuse me, team assignment, only one person needs to turn it in. I will want you to also do team assessment forms. What I may do this time, if I have time to put it up, is I may actually just have a uh, Qualtrics link where you can just do a survey online about your fellow team teammates. All right, any questions? Okay, let me see really quick. <clears throat> if they are up. So unfortunately, I was going to show you, I was actually going to show you the very beginning, except 
currently pop cap is down. Uh, let's see. All right, here's my backup plan. I'm sure they'll come back up. They were up last night. <clears throat> my backup plan is I can show you a quick video on YouTube. And we're not going to go through the whole thing. But basically, this is what you'll see when you start the game. Well, it has this other, this loading, loading something for this that I think they didn't show on here. And I turned off the sound because when you watch it on YouTube, people like listening to themselves talk. So they're talking about it a lot. <clears throat> and of course, when you play, if you turn on the sound, you'll hear the zombie sounds and all that fun and exciting stuff. Okay, before I spoil it for those of you who have not played this. So just very quickly, from what you just saw, what I'm going to ask you two, guys to answer two things in class. What, if you imagine yourself playing this, what are some of your impressions as a user? I know it's not the same as playing it. Do you want me to bring up some of the user experience? Excuse me, the, the, the user experience calls. What do you think? One, enjoyable, engaging, entertaining, motivating, fun. Yeah, so you would basically go ahead and talk about these user, you know, your user experience goals. You want to list them and talk about what makes it entertaining, what makes it motivating, you know, what makes it um, engaging from the user's perspective. All right. <clears throat> now, from the, here's the second question. So does that make it a little clearer as to what I'm looking for? OK, second question. Let's go back here so you can look at it really quick. From a user experience point of view, where I'm asking you to apply what you've learned in class, tell me one thing that you've noticed about how this game is designed. It gives you feedback. Right, you guys notice that? Is there anyone who didn't notice that? All right, how does it give you feedback? I'm sorry, but by flashing the zombie when you hit it. So that is one example of feedback. So if we go and we start playing it, that's my favorite part of the feedback. Head pops off. But as she said, notice that every time, OK, it's a little quick on this one. Every time you hit the zombie, you see a flash. That's an example of feedback. Right, that's, an, that's another great example of feedback. Right, so um, there are plenty of examples for you guys to use. But that's the type of thing that I'm looking for. Tell me what you, you, know, what you see. Hold on. <clears throat> tell me what you see. So tell me what, what aspect of um, your design principles that you see for every, all of them. You have to do at least one for each design principle. And you have to describe, OK, it has feedback. Describe, just like we did in class, what is it about that is giving you feedback? What is it telling you? Make sense? So you guys know what you're going to do? 
It's fun, right? It's like, yes, I'm going to be playing Planes vs. Zombies till next week. All right. Now, of course, if you have any questions, let me know. Again, just as a reminder, <clears throat> let me go back up here. Just as a reminder, all of them, at least one example. Not one example of a usability goal, one example of every usability goal. You can put more if you'd like, but make sure that you do not uh, shortchange me in my assignment. Actually, it will be shortchanging you when you're studying for the midterm exam, too. All right, any questions? Yes? I'm sorry, say that again? Right, so when it comes to, say, for example, we'll jump even jump to the Gestalt laws. We talked about a number of different Gestalt laws. It must be one example of every single Gestalt law. All right? Now, I will tell you that you guys are experts in, well, close to be experts in usability goals and design principles. Those are going to be a lot easier for you. You'll probably have to look, work a little bit more for some of these others, but they are there. What I want you to be able to come out of this assignment with is really looking at applications, even if it's a fun application. Some of you may go into gaming, or you may decide, I need to create this awesome, awesome app for the board office worker that helps them get their work done and is fun. I know, we all dream of that, right? So I want you to be able to actually apply these, because applying them is actually the hardest part. Actually, in fact, applying them or you're applying them to create a design is even harder, but this is a way of applying them that's really going to help cement the concept in your mind. <clears throat> okay, yes. Yes, you. Okay, yes. Yeah. So, um, you can use overlapping examples. Actually, I've got an email asking me to repeat questions. Sorry, the question was, can you use overlapping examples? The answer is yes. So if you ha there is a particular feature of Plants vs. Zombies that shows both memorability and feedback, you can use that example for both. And in fact, using an example like that, I find particularly interesting because a lot of times we just see a one-to-one -one correspondence, but that's not how most applications are. So if you can take one aspect and you can apply more than one of these to that, that actually is great. I'll be thrilled. <clears throat> All right, any other questions? You guys are ready to go. Some of you are like, yes, and others of you are like, I can't believe you're making me play a game for class. All right. <clears throat> So at this point, we can do one of two things. I actually was considering letting you guys go and start working on assignment three and have you watch my video, except the problem is that PopCap is not up. They're down. Let me ask you this. Who, has, who in class has access to Plants vs. Zombies already? OK. What, about eight of you guys? Are all of you guys in different groups? Yes, no, maybe? OK, I'm getting silence from everybody else. Is it, do, is it working now? The pop cap. No? OK. All right, it, um, it actually looks to me like not all of the groups have access to Plants vs. Zombies. Oh, wait, there we go. <clears throat> By the way, you can lie. Just make sure you're 13 or older. It doesn't matter what you pick. All right, so this is, this is the link. Excuse the 
not so lovely advertisement. But it at least tells you how long you need to wait. Now, you may be able to download and try the game for free. Um, I didn't do that because I actually paid for the game. <laughs> but if you, you, know, you can try that, see if that works. But here you'll see that you can actually play the game online. Let me see if the sound, not that you have to listen to the sound. Here's the sound. Our lovely music. See, if you have the sound on, you have even more options to talk about. Okay, I'm not going to play. <laughs> I showed you a video. I'd like, I'd like to continue playing. But now that it's, okay, so now that it's up, you can do one of two things. I can, t I can go ahead and lecture. Um, or I can let you start working on assignment three, and then I will later on today post my previous one of my previous lectures that's essentially the same lecture I would give today. All right, so we're going to take a vote with a show of hands. Who wants me to continue to lecture? Okay, this half of the class. <laughs> Who wants to work on assignment three? Some of the people who also want to see me lecture. <laughs> okay, is there anyone who would be horribly disappointed and upset if I didn't lecture and I posted a video? <laughs> okay, this is what we can do. I can lecture and those of you who want to stay can stay, except my voice is going. Um, and I can still post the video. Does that sound good? Some of you are like, yeah, I'm out of here. <laughs> Pack my bag. Is anyone going to stay if I lecture? Okay, a couple of you will stay. All right, so I'll go ahead and lecture. Hopefully my voice will last. And I will also go ahead and look for that video, and I'll pull that video and post the lecture for those of you who... Um, Decide to abandon me. Just kidding. All right? Now, one last time. Any other questions about assignment three? Yes? Have the groups been formed already? Have the groups been formed already? Um, unless you want to change your group, use the same group as assignment one. Oh, same group? Same group. Yes, yes. Are there any differences between the mobile version and the desktop version? In the first five subsections as far as I know um, I did not notice any differences between the mobile version or the online version or the desktop version so um, you can use any of them if you want to go ahead and use the mobile version if you have access to that go ahead um, the I would say the main difference is if you're using it on a tablet you use your finger instead of a mouse I think that's pretty much the that's pretty much the, the only difference um, I know later on when it comes to, um, I guess, getting money and getting some of the, I don't know, accomplishments, there are some differences, but not in the beginning of it. <clears throat> Until I played it a lot, it's terrible. All right, any other questions? All right, so you guys heard me, right? You can use any version that you want. You can use the online version, you can use the desktop version, or you can use the mobile version. Yes. Yes. 